What's up, bros? Product showcase time. I just made a specific product video uh, for what's going to be the new channel. So you're going to want to go check out, we're going to think we're going to call it Obsessed Garage Shorts. It's going to be a channel that has clips of Maddie rants and ridiculousness. And it's also going to be the place where we house the very specific how to, how to use the stuff. And it's going to get rid of all the why and all the stuff that I do here on the main channel, which is me just shooting from the hip, telling you the story. So this is McKee's N914, as you've seen from the title of this. And um, I think the bottle freaking sucks, but um, the product is legit. And I've been fighting this for a while. I've been using O&R for a number of years, sporadically, uh, meaning I, I use it but very only when I have to. And I think this product still fits that same category where I'm gonna use it when I need to use it, when the frickin' um, car is, uh, in the, when the conditions are right. Conditions right now, hurricane just rolled through, it's frickin' raining all day every day, GT3 is dirty, it's sitting here in the bay, I don't wanna go out and wash in the rain, get my pressure washer and all that stuff out, and so, us in the southeast or in California or areas where you're lacking, uh, lacking the ability to go outside or maybe there are conditions where you're in drought where you can't wash like you'd like. Uh, Arizona where it's super, super hot, you want to you know, wash in the garage. Um, that's when I think this is practical. Another practical application would be, you know, you're in the north and it snows and in the winter time you can't clean the car the way you'd like. So. I think that this is a product that needs to be in your car washing system or your package or in your arsenal. And I do think that this improves upon what ONR created. I think that McKee's probably got lucky on this, but let's give them credit and say that they really, you know, did lots of development to come up with this product. So we're gonna use this a bunch of different ways. Main way is rinseless. Now remember, rinseless implies that I have water. God dang, what are they doing out there? Rinseless implies that we have water, but we don't have a hose and we don't have a pressure washer, you know, in this particular application. So I can fill up my bucket with a couple gallons of water, use a bunch of towels, and I can do a rinseless wash of my car, meaning that I'm using a bucket and water, but I'm not able to rinse it off with a pressure washer or a hose. When we're doing that application, we're gonna dilute one to, one to 256. 256 to 1, what you should say, which is what I should be saying. And the way to do that is, um, what was that calculator Bryce is using? Omni, Om, Omni Calc, just Google it, and you'll find this calculator where you put, this is a 750 milliliter bottle, and then it spits out that we need, uh, that for this dilution, we need right at three milliliters of the keys and 744 milliliters of water. That's it. So it's, one pipette. This is a three millimeter pipette. So from this line to there is all the product you need in order to create a rinseless solution. If you're making up a bucket, I have two gallons of water in here. We've determined it's three caps. So just keep that simple formula. One and a half caps per gallon. So say three caps for two gallons, just eyeball it, get it close and you're good. I actually used a, you know, my little gallon measuring to put to exactly two or close to exactly two gallons. And I did three caps of the product. And so I'm gonna use that most often. I'm gonna use rinseless as a pre-soak in a bottle and then rinseless in my bucket with a bunch of uh, pluffles or what we call uh, waterless wash towels. Uh, these are from the rag company. You use a bunch of those. I'm gonna wipe the car down and I'm gonna use a big old uh, gauntlet towel a big bulk towel to finish the process. That's what we call rinseless wash. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna wash the GT3 here together. The other option, and you're gonna use this, I never use detail spray, ever. Just, just take, take detail spray out of my psyche. Uh, so I don't wanna think about detail spray because when you think detail spray, just think scratch. So just take that out of your vocabulary and think rinse, Mike, you didn't tell me this whole freaking video. I've had this backwards. Sorry, this is waterless. I was talking rinseless is one to 256. Waterless is one to 128. So this is waterless here. Sorry, sorry about that people. I'm showing you the wrong thing. Should be looking at the darn camera. That's what you're not gonna get in the, in the Obsessed Garage shorts. You're gonna get edited down to like three minutes of the exact right stuff. So waterless wash 
is what is going to replace your detail spray nomenclature. Waterless means I don't have a bucket, I don't have any water other than the water that's in the dilution of this. By the way, this is 744 milliliters. So I got that wrong. 747 and three, 744 and two pipettes, so six. So this is twice as concentrated, if you will. I don't know if that math works out correctly, but this is 128 to one. And this is a more concentrated, which means more encapsulation, which means um, that you're going to be able to use this without the addition of water. Uh, the other thing, Kyle brought up a good point. If you were pre-soaking, if you were like using a pressure washer to rinse off, and then you were using this in lieu of a two bucket soap and wash method, um, then maybe this would work because you're diluting the surface even more um, by spraying on a bunch of water. Uh, and so this, this would be what you would use. So waterless wash. This is, I just washed the car. I drove to the garage. I got a bunch of bugs on the front. I got three bugs in the front. I'm going to use this to spot treat. Or, you know, my window, someone sprayed their windshield wipers after I washed my car. So I got a relatively clean car and I just need to spot treat. Or my car isn't clean and some bird took a dump on my roof uh, and I want to spot treat. Don't grab a detail spray. Use something with some encapsulation. Uh, I'm not worried about protection. There's no polymers, there's no protection in this stuff. That's the main reason why I like this and why we made the switch, is there's nothing left behind. Because I haven't tested this yet, but we're probably gonna end up using it as a clay lube as well. Uh, so it'll be like a three-pronged you know, three -pronged product, a product that does multiple things because it's not leaving anything behind. But the beauty of this is how slick it is when you're using it. So let's frickin' wash the car and get into it. I already did this fender. So, we're getting there. It's already partially clean. It's so foreign to me to shoot a bunch of freaking videos getting straight to the point. The whole point is me not getting to the point. That's what this whole thing is built on. But we're going to do it this way. We're going we're gonna to create... We're, what I want to do is unpack all of the... Uh, all the content that we provide and not have to give it to people who don't want an hour-long version of that. I want to give them that too. So one of the things I dislike about this process is all the cracks and crevices, the wheel wells, all that stuff. I'm not addressing that. I can't, can't really get that unless I want to take a towel and jam it up in there, which I don't want to do. So to me, this is very superficial. This is a, a, just a superficial clean and then I'm going to sit the car here and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to uh, clean it for whatever reason. I just want to kind of touch it up and clean it up. And I'm not going to get too aggressive with chasing bugs and things like that. But I'm going to pre-soak it. Some would argue that maybe you should pre-soak it with a more aggressive or more concentrated version of the formula. I'm going to stick with the formula. So my car isn't super dirty. I drove through the rain. But it was clean before I drove through the rain the other day. And so it's just like, we'll call it moderately dirty. I know, remember, it always looks good on camera. Why does this towel look dirty? Is that just stained? Yeah. So I took, fold the towel in eighths, like this. You know, fold it in half, fold it in half again. So now I got eight sides to work with. And the, the hood here is one of the cleaner areas. So I may do a little bit bigger area than I normally do. But I'm just going to go and swipe around and try to remove as much dirt as I can. I'm telling you, the advantage of this stuff is it's freaking slick as crap. Even at such a low dilution, it's pretty remarkable. So with two sides of the towel, I did the entire hood area. And you know, we got some dirt. Matt, your cars are always clean. Why are you always washing clean cars? Because I'm not a freaking delinquent. I like my cars clean, so I want to keep them clean. So I'm maintaining, not, not taking some garbage car from the woods and pretending like I am just found this magic unicorn and I'm, that I'm cleaning up. I have the unicorn. I just want to keep the unicorn a unicorn. So stop your freaking complaining. I like cleaning clean stuff. I like improving good stuff. So again, you know, I'm not getting blowing out leaves and stuff. It's very superficial. 
you know, this kind of clean. I want to be careful chasing bugs, but this is why this whole frickin' nonsense, there's bugs all over this thing. You don't need a bug remover if you've got protection on your car. You don't need it. It's just not, not something you need to have. It should just wipe right off. And if it doesn't wipe right off, after I get all the sand and dirt off of this that's now encapsulated by the product, I'll chase that afterward. You know, I'll make a couple of basic no pressure swipes and if the bug doesn't come off after that, I'll get it in the drying process. Flip my towel around. Going on my other four sides. Yeah, there's quite a few freaking bugs on this thing. Clean my headlight off. Just don't chase. Use more towels. Don't do giant areas. That's my suggestion to you. So when I always see people doing a, a single bucket method and they talk about how superior it is, well, they, they use four freaking sponges to wash the entire car. It's stupid. You can't do that. You gotta use like freaking 12. Because the towel, because I have the ability to flip it around, I can do a little larger areas. Take my rinseless, pre-soak my fender here. And so I'm going to do this in sections like this. I'm going to now wipe this down with the bulk drying towel, the larger drying towel, once I finish the front clip. I'm telling you, this method gets the car. It's better than nothing, but I would still much prefer to be doing a full wash. So then this towel, I'll just throw on the floor. I'm going to take my rinseless solution, take my big towel, because this doesn't leave any polymers behind, I'm changing my process a little bit where I'm, I'm gonna add a little bit more and then dry. Just in case there's any leftover dislodged dirt that is, hasn't really encapsulated well. I'm gonna take my towel, make old towel and I'm gonna dry it. I'm going to show you another method here when we go to the other part of the car. Show you another thing that you could add to this to the process as well. Because this differs from O&R in that there's, no, there's nothing left behind. So I still want to use some care. And that, you know, I'm still lifting some dirt off of here onto my big towel. You know, most of it went, went in that towel there. But because I'm not rinsing the car, and this is rinseless, you know, the dirt is still encapsulated in this, some of this leftover product that we're wiping off. I'm telling you, this thing is a lot dirtier than it looks on camera. And I just like how this, one of the things that really bothered me with OptiClean, which was their waterless wash, which was just a more concentrated version of O&R, pretty, you know, within, you know, within, it's pretty close to it anyway. The, um, it was always left all kinds of streaks behind and never really looked very good in comparison. I felt more comfortable using that than any kind of detail spray because I knew it did have the same properties in O&R and would be encapsulating. So see, now that the dirt is wiped off, that's when I wipe whatever leftover bug guts were left, which won't be many. But this wipes, the reason why we all like this more, it's a little bit slicker and it wipes clean. No streaks, nothing left behind on your windows and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's the whole front clip, which, you know, I don't know how much quicker that is than just getting out all your stuff and you know blasting through the car it might be even slower but you get the concept so let's do the top and i'll change the process up just a little bit so i get a new towel you've got to get these presso bottles in your life people they still have we still have some improvements to work on over time 
Like I would like the atomization to be a little bit more, um, how do I say it? A little bit more uh, linear. And there's a little bit of wonk to it. You know, sometimes they'll spray to the side. And, so I'd like to be a bit more precise is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. All right, so soak that down in the towel. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I learned this from Ivan LaCroix. When you wring out your towel, don't completely wring it out, but you do want to wring it out to some extent because I don't need gallons of water. Now this towel has already have some staining from washing before, so it's not dirty. It's a brand, it's a fresh, clean towel. And I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna do my thing. And we just pre-soaked it. Windows I can be a little bit more aggressive on because the window isn't gonna scratch like your paint or your PPF will. You wanna treat, like this car has PPF all over it, you wanna tr still treat it like paint. Take extra care, make sure you're taking your time. Don't use pressure, use the pre-soak. So knowing that theoretically, if I did add some scratching, that this will self-heal as soon as I get it out in the sun. But I don't wanna go there. I don't wanna rely on that. And I'm gonna wash sections like normal. So one little tip here, I'm gonna wipe the paint first and I'll use that same side to wipe the glass and I can stretch this towel a little bit longer because of that. Or I wouldn't want to do that big of an area with one side of the towel. So I'm going to do with the paint first. And then I take that towel on the same side, transition onto the window. Okay. Now this time I'm going to do it a little bit differently. That towel's done. I decide I want a little bit of protection, so I'm going to get my drying aid out, and I've got my bulk drying towel, and I'm going to, this is a b and Slipstream, and so I'm going to spray a little drying aid here. So now I'm getting a little bit of protection in my drying step. What do you think about that, huh? That's pretty cool. I still, the car is just not, it's not as clean, you know? It's, this is a very superficial cleaning. It's gonna look clean. The areas that you can see are gonna feel clean, but it's not as clean as doing a full wash, it's just not. the door jams and all the all the other spots of the car aren't going to be as clean plus for whatever reason I don't enjoy this as much but I think it's a necessary thing to have in your arsenal I'm almost out of my prototype this is bad news we got to get the product going so the the OG drying aid, depending on when you watch this video in history, is uh, it's due at the end of, uh, probably the end of August would be my guess. Hopefully sooner than that, but. So after I dry this, let's show you how we would water this wash. If we didn't have a bucket, we use the more concentrated formula. The other thing that really sucks doing this is wheels. You know, I don't want to, especially if you didn't have, well, I got carbon ceramics for gosh sakes. If you didn't have that, it'd be a nightmare. This towel might be a little bit big for this, but I want to have a big towel. That way I can spread it around, spread around the potential of dirt and funk. So if we went waterless, which is our more concentrated version, I just think this kind of defeats the purpose. But let's say we were cleaning this dirty, dirty part of the door. 
I'm gonna really get at it. So if I'm gonna go this crazy, I might as well get the freaking bucket out, don't you think? I mean, so I got water that's running. I got a dry towel. I'm gonna go and do a first initial wipe from top to bottom. So that got a bunch of it off. And I'm gonna go and do a second wipe. If I tried to clean the whole car like this, I'm gonna use freaking 500 towels. Still got dirt in the door jam I'm gonna have to address. And so, I'm basically telling you this way is kinda of dumb. But if you were traveling, this could be a method. Have yourself a big towel like this, get the rest off. But you're gonna have to do much smaller sections. You have to use a lot of towels and a lot of time to clean the surface. But it's still, you know, it's safe. I don't think it's as safe as doing a pressure washing. You know, because I, when I, when I'm, when I'm doing the rinse of the pressure washer, I'm washing off most of the bulk, most of the dirt. And of course, I didn't add any protection here. I could follow up and do a. Do a little bit of uh, put the drying aid on there to add a little bit of you know sacrificial layer protection, but you know that's how sacrificed. But I think the rinseless, rinseless method, and I don't even think you really need. If I'm not revisiting this, I probably don't even need this darn. I know I don't need this in here. Just gets in the way because I only have two gallons in a six-gallon bucket. So I think. This is still the better method. Take this, fold it in eighths, and I come through and do my thing. No pressure. Don't do the, don't push down. I'm hoping to, it is, the dirt is encapsulated and lifted. And I'm lifting, say, 80% of the dirt off. There's still 20% left that we'll get when we're drying. And that 20% left is the reason why I tend to prefer to spray a little bit more product on. prior to getting the big bulk drying towel out and doing it. That's the word of the day, bulk drying towel. I just, I don't know if I made that up or where I stole it from. And I'm gonna clean the jams as well. But my door jams never get quite as clean as they would if I was doing a full, full wash. You can tell where my allegiance is. Did I flip this towel? I don't remember. Shoot. We'll just finish right here. Always err on the side of getting a new towel. Getting a fresh towel. It doesn't have to be a new towel, but a fresh towel. I feel more confident if I was going to do this process. I'd feel more confident doing it this way and then drying aid afterward if you really felt the need to add a layer of protection. I would probably, most instances, unless I was in the north and it was winter and I'm, you know, and this is the wash I'm using pretty exclusively, um, I would do the drying aid when I'm doing my normal wash and just skip the drying aid on this and just put the extra rinseless on. That would be my suggestion. But if it was, you know, if I was winter time in the north, I would uh, 
I think I would um, do this, and then right now I would add the drying, drying aid after I've wiped everything down. So the, I guess the logical question would be, when do I switch out the bulk towel? I don't know. Use your best judgment. Depending on how much dirt you feel like you're getting off during the normal process. It's different than washing regularly. Like I could just quit. You can't quit when you do a uh, Like I could just say, oh, I'm not cleaning the rest of it. I'll just leave it at that. But if I was doing a regular wash, I don't have a choice. There's no quitting. You got to finish it because it's all wet. I don't know, that just occurred to me right now as I'm thinking about it. I don't want to quit. <laughs> quit doing this. What time is it? I got 10 minutes, but I got a call with Cree Corporate. Let's keep going. Let's do a wheel here. You know, I probably, if I was gonna do my wheel, I'd probably grab one of my little wheel towels. I don't know that I wanna really taint these pluffles. So I would certainly do the wheels last. And I would use my bulk drying towel to finish up the wheel. Maybe, I'm thinking about my process here. Maybe what I would do is take a waterless wash since the wheel is gonna be a little dirtier. Need a little bit more concentrated formula. Take my wheel and tire towel this little 12 by 12 guy. Get it in my rinseless solution. Bring it out a bit. Clean the wheel first. Try to reach in and get as much of the caliper as I can. Getting the rotor hat as much as I can. Problem is it's kind of hard to flip the towel around, so I'm really just kind of moving dirt around, hoping to lift as much as I can. And this is one of those highly um, customizable processes. You can use my process, but my guess is if you've done this a lot, your process is probably better than mine. And you can take my info for what it's worth, like, like normal but uh, there's all kinds of little, little techniques you can employ in developing and honing your process around cleanup. And then I would take my bulk. After, you know, again, I would normally do this after I finish the whole car. So this is the time you do the wheels last. Do the wheels first when you're doing a traditional wash. Do the wheels last because it's going to be the dirtiest part and I won't revisit the paint. Now it's also very helpful. I mean, this is way easier because I've got carbon ceramics here. You know? You know what might make sense is do this. Hit it again before I wipe it down since there's still likely going to be a lot of dirt that I just pushed around. I do love how this wipes up though, man. That's what's so great. That's why I let the guys talk me into doing this 914, is that it wipes up super duper clean. Whereas, you know, O&R leaves a little something behind, which also means that it can be, tend to be, it can be streaky. I found O&R was much less streaky than OptiClean. And then this also becomes more practical in pre-polishing. Because the last thing you want to do is decon a car and then put some polymers on top of it again. So that's how I do the wheel. So yeah, uh, N914 uh, is, I think, super viable. You know, even says on the bottle, you I hate being a guy that just reads the freaking instructions to you on a video. What value do I add? I want to add some, some context and how I'm using the stuff. But rinseless is obviously the most, probably the most useful area where I'm going to use this stuff. And then waterless, we just showed, you know, waterless, 
you can kind of pick and choose. So I probably have a rinseless and waterless dilution in two separate bottles out and ready depending on what I felt like I need when I was cleaning. And then you can use it as a clay lubricant. The clay lube is the same dilution as waterless. So I'm guessing the next car I do, I'm gonna use this. I'm guessing I may eliminate nano skin or auto scrub, the auto, or the um, glide solution, not the auto scrub, but use this with an auto scrub or a clay bar. And then they do say paint prep eight to one. Um, not sure. I probably still prefer to have some sort of alcohol-based solution, but maybe, you know, maybe we try it. I, I don't intend to use it for that. Um, but it's a super viable product. I think it's something you need in your cabinet. I think um, it smells pretty good. That's always a good thing, I guess. It's, it's some, some, it makes it more fun. Um, I think it's something that you need to add to your cabinet. I think it's probably worth this is going to be provocative here, but I'm going to throw away my O and R, and you guys are going to freak out about that. I'll take it for free. Well, I don't have time to ship it to you. Um, I think you throw away your remaining bottle of O and R and OptiClean, and you put this in the cabinet. I think it's good. I'm glad I listened to the guys, Kyle and Bryce. They didn't even let me listen. They just ordered it, so. I like it. Anyway, this is Obsessed Garage. You're gonna to continue to see improving, improvement in our video quality. About to move into the Arn building here soon. Um, we're gonna build um, the Obsessed Garage Shorts channel. If you have, a, if you have any ideas, I'll tell you what, in the comments, if you made it this far into the video, if you have any ideas of uh, some names for, not something hokey, but something consistent with Obsessed Garage, what should we call that channel? I said uh, memes and extremes, but uh, that didn't pass the, uh, pass the book. So nothing stupid like that. But Obsessed Garage Clips, Obsessed Garage Shorts, um, where we have shortened versions of how to use products, shortened versions of, um, I'm, I've been calling it unpacking a lot in the membership program videos and the vlogs, where we unpack all of this data, all of this stuff that I put together over the years that's in these hour long videos or 30, 40, 50 minute long videos into shorter, more digestible things for those who want to get to the point. Uh, we're going to have that available to you and we've built out a team so we're going to start to be able to produce. And it's going to be thousands of videos as well as extracting out some of my rants. So thanks for watching. A good product. I think it's something that's viable and um, I'll continue to update you as we come up with different ways of using it. Thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. See you soon. P.S. Bro tip from Bryce. You should probably put this in your windshield washer reservoir uh, so that way you get a slick and nothing added, no water spot type funk. We're probably going to have this replace Angel Wax Clarity. So, bro tip for you. Use it in your windshield washer squirter thingy at uh, 1 to 250, 256 to 1. That's it. See ya.